I don't know, is that blue sand? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are finally filming part two of reacting to my subscribers tarantula enclosures. I filmed this video about six weeks ago, I think, and I posted part one and then I said I'd do part two, got a little distracted. Anyway, here we are, better late than never. The good news is that a lot of time has passed since I've last seen these, so I honestly don't remember what any of them really look like. So that should make my reactions a little bit more, I guess, raw. And again, if I change any Thing or say I would change something that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to I'm just gonna give my opinion and what I personally might have done differently also if you like my shirt don't forget that you can actually buy it not this one but one just like it off my teespring I have it linked down below so yeah anyway I asked my patreons to send me photographs of their tarantula enclosures so we're actually gonna react to those first and then we'll react to the rest of the ones that I collected like six or eight weeks ago so first up we're gonna be looking at Angela's and this is her pokey I really like this enclosure. It's just an exoterra, which is one of my favorite kinds to keep arboreals in. She's left the background in and included like a plant with cork bark, moss. It looks like she even has some leaf litter, which makes me kind of question if this is bioactive. But yeah, this is a great enclosure. I really like it. I don't think I'd really change anything. It looks great. Next up we have Blake's and this is his Asamani. I really like this enclosure. It kind of looks like a fishbowl. In the middle it has a cork bark hide, I believe that is in a water dish that I'm sure his Samani put right there because if his Samani is anything like my Samani, my Samani never just leave their water dish alone. They just don't. It always becomes a part of their enclosure and I always have to add another water dish because the other one that they had, they decided to put in their burrow and web up and use it to hold their burrow. Anyway, that's a really nice looking Samani and a good enclosure. All right, so next up we have Dave's enclosure. This is his P species Rufus and he has that, that water dish. I all the UK people have those and one of the UK people sent me those. It's like my favorite. I feel super special. This looks like a food storage container, which is always actually really nice when you get a crystal clear one like this. And as you see on the very top and on the sides, it looks like there's ventilation. So that's awesome. Thanks, Dave. Okay, so this is Emma's enclosure and this is her green bottle blue. I'm glad that you included a skull because like I've said before, it's probably a sin if you have a green bottle blue and you don't have some kind of bones or skull for it to web up. Personally, I think that's essential for every green bottle blue. She has actually set hers up, I'd say more arboreally than semi-arboreally, arboreally. Some people actually set up their green bottle blues like this because they don't dig. Mine, actually, I don't even think it really dug as a sling. It's just always webbed things up because green bottle blue actually like, if I haven't said it before, they live at the bottoms of like bushes. So they don't really live in burrows underground, but they also don't really live like up in the trees. So I'd say that this is the pretty appropriate enclosure and I really like the skull. And next we're gonna look at Mikel. This is his Grandma Stola Iherini. So not only is this an awesome species, but he also set up like one of my favorite enclosures I think I've ever seen. Personally, I've really been getting into this like naturalistic look for my animals and I'd really like to kind of move more towards that and like put more effort into my enclosures even though tarantulas are pretty ungrateful and they don't really care what their enclosure looks like. Personally, I really like the look of this. So as much as they don't care, I do. And I would really like to move more towards something like this. In fact, I think I would really like to do something that looks just like this for Hypnotoad. He would probably thrive in something like this. Thank you so much, Mikel, for sharing. And this is Sarah. So this is, I believe it's an Asamani. And <laughs> she has the water dish up there, which hasn't become a part of the enclosure because I don't think the Samani is strong enough to move that water dish so but it's so funny because my asamani one of them anyway has kind of hollowed out and done that same little look to it they just absolutely love to burrow so it looks like this one has a ton of room to burrow and it looks like there's a lot of nice moist substrate on the bottom which is really cool when it gradually gets more damp as you get deeper kind of like the earth <laughs> and this is tracy's curly hair i think she said this was her first tarantula that she got you did better than i did because my first was a curly hair but i used like this much substrate and you've used like this much substrate although it looks like yours is burrowed inside that wood and i just remember as soon as i got my curly hair wester he was out for like the first day then he went in his coconut hut and then he hid for like weeks and i didn't see him for so long i was so upset i thought something was wrong Curly hairs just really like their privacy though. And of course, last but not least, this is Kaylee and Russ. So this is actually two different enclosures. The first one, I'm not sure what it is, but it looks like something is up in the corner. And I'm going to guess that it is an avicularia species. It has this really nice cork bark tube, which I personally just love 
the look of those. If I was a spider, I would want a cork bark tube, personally. I don't know, it just seems ideal. It looks like this Evic has a lot to web to, and it's also got moss on the bottom to hold humidity, and a nice acrylic enclosure for display. So good job, Kaylee and Russ. And then the other one looks like an Aphonopelma calcotes, which is one of my favorite species, if that's what it is. That enclosure also looks really good. It's got a piece of cork, ev everything that it would need. It has a little water dish, which is fine. Aphonopelma samani are a little bit more of a drier species, so they're not really going to be needing a water dish as much but of course it's always good to have one so good job okay so that was all of the submissions from my patreon's enclosures and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the enclosures from part two which is the embalfori pokies lp t stermy miscellaneous and not specified so let's get into it so here is our first embalfori enclosure which it looks like it's webbed like crazy i don't really know if there's more than one in here but i think there's only one i would say if there's more than one it might need to be a little bit bigger of an enclosure but I'm not really that familiar with communals so I don't really I, I can't say for sure yeah visually it looks great I really like this enclosure all right so this is the next embalfori enclosure and I see this one has less substrate than the other and I guess there's like a little bit of a debate where some people say they need more substrate and some people say they need less substrate I'm kind of wondering if this is like one of those weird fickle species that kind of goes either way but yeah the setup looks good oh I really like the look of this one so it it has that water dish but that like little opening for the entrance of whatever hide that is kind of incorporated in the ground looks so freaking cool. I love it. I love the wood, everything. This is just a really great enclosure. I would love to have something like this. Oh my god. This is an Embalfori communal. Oh my gosh, it looks so freaking cool. Like, frick, I I need to step up my game. If I ever get an Embalfori communal, I want it to look like something like this because it's just like the perfect big acrylic display box and then that weird like ornament thing with all the openings it looks like there actually is an opening and then some aren't i'm not really sure but it just goes along so well with the webbing next to it it looks like this crazy thing out of a stephen king movie i don't know some kind of alien planet thing very cool so that's all the Embalfori submissions that I got. Let's move on to Pokies. All right, we actually got quite a few Pokies. So first we got a P Metallica, and this is a really nice display enclosure. It's very naturalistic, and it looks like there's a lot of coverage, which is really good. They're pretty light sensitive. Next is a P Striata. So this enclosure looks like an Exoterra, but I don't think it is. It's something very similar. I like the use of the flowers. Overall, a pretty nice setup. This is a P Formosa, and you can actually see her on the cork bark. It's so hard to see them when they're on the cork bark because they really just blend into their environment but i really like the piece of cork bark i think that's a great hide and it's got a live plant it looks like i'm not sure what that substrate is it actually looks almost like a clay i'm not really sure but it looks really cool i bet that's probably for the plants because the plants all look live so it's probably something that they can grow in really well i'd be interested in trying different substrates like that and then this is another p formosa and again it's got a really nice big piece of cork bark tube so this one doesn't have a background and i've said this before personally i prefer them to have a background but in this case i think this looks better i think i would leave it without a background it's just so open and just so simplistic i just really like how it looked out and of course it's very suitable for the pisletheria that resides in it because although pisletheria are arboreal they do kind of like to sometimes dig in the substrate too like my p regalis he always is kind of in a hide behind some cork bark and the dirt that he kind of built it looks like we have another p metallica and this is just a sling i'm guessing but the enclosure is very nice it has some cross ventilation cork and moss it looks really clean but i'm sure it's going to start pooping all over it soon if it hasn't already so <laughs> why do they do that all right i don't think i have what kind of pokey this is and i'm gonna admit i'm not the most versed in pokies so i can't tell you for sure what species it is but it's very big and beautiful and it looks like it has this ornament that it can climb and web up I'm not sure if it really has a dark area of the enclosure to hide in. Granted, there is, you know, a little bit of coverage with that ornament, but personally, I might put something in there just so that it has like some shadowy area, just because I don't really like the light. Okay, so we have a P Ornata, and here we are again with the cork bark tube, half buried, really cool water dish. I like the rocks and that coverage. That, that's great, I really like that. This is a P Regalis, and this actually has the water dish up 
high on the side of the enclosure, which I think is most ideal for arboreal species. It also has what look to be live plants and leaf litter. Man, I really just want to get into this bioactive thing. It's just so freaking cool. I love the moss growing on. It just looks so good. And this is a pea vitata. It looks like a sling. This enclosure looks really good. It has a cork bark tube, plants, dirt. I mean, there's really not much more you really need for them. All right, so that's it for pokies. Now we get to look at Lazadora parabana. Okay, so Lazadora parabana are a really cool species. Some people start out with them. Personally, I think they're a little spicy for that, but hey, they got really itchy hairs. But anyway, let's get into it. So this enclosure looks really damp and I will say that I know a lot of people might be quick to say it's too damp, but honestly, if you do this like once a week and kind of let it dry up throughout the week, that is perfect. That's gonna give them the humidity they need and the dryness and it's just gonna be like a really happy medium. Lesidora parabana actually love moisture. They're a very humid species, so this is a good setup. All right, so this is a really big Lazadora parabana. You can see it in the corner. Again, this one might look a little bit too dry, but it can look too wet or too dry based on when they last watered it. I'm not really sure if this one has a hide. And I will say that once they start getting really big and putting on that size, it's sometimes difficult to find a piece of cork or some kind of hide for them. Of course, they do have the option to burrow, but they're not all going to want to burrow. But this one's webbed up the flooring quite a bit. So it looks like it's well adjusted to the enclosure. Like, okay, this is a giant Lazadora Parabana enclosure, but they get huge and it, it works. It's great. Look at all the leaf litter and that giant piece of cork that it probably stays in most of the time. That's just a really nice setup. It's got a ton of space. Is all the space necessary? Depends who you ask. I would say no, but there's nothing wrong with it. Like it's a really nice big enclosure. And I'm sure at night when that Lazadora Parabana probably comes out and wanders around. It probably looks really cool. It looks like a slice of the forest literally in an enclosure, which is super cool. Oh my gosh. I remember that Xbox controller. Isn't that Oh, that's an old one, isn't it? What, I, don't, I haven't even played Xbox in so long. But anyway, this enclosure, it's really cool. You know, it's a conversation piece, I'd say. It looks like it's got lots of coverage hides not sure if it's gonna fit in that coconut there. So that's all the Lesador Parabanas we got, the Salmon Pink Bird Eaters. Now let's move on to another bird eater, which is the Tea Sturmy. So we only got three Tea Sturmy, but this enclosure looks really nice. I really like that grass. If anybody knows what kind of plant that is, comment down below, because I would really like to put something like that in Hypnotoad's enclosure. Okay, so this is a, oh, I see the tea stir me. It almost blends in with that substrate, but this one has, it looks like a generous amount of damp substrate. I might add a little bit more. Whenever I use a clay pot like this, I really like to take some substrate and actually put it like over it. So like I'll bury it, you know what I mean? So it'll be like half buried and then it'll like, I don't know, it just looks really cool. All right, and so this is the other tea stormy enclosure and this looks like it actually has a couple different hides that it could go in. It's very damp, so tea stormy need a lot of moisture. They have a lot of issues molting, it seems like. People always ask me if I have one. I actually don't. I think they're a little overpriced for what they are and it just seems like they have issues with molts and cysts. So I'm not really like wanting to invest like money into a tea stormy or even a tea blondie because it's just not, I don't know, it's just not. If somebody like was like, hey, here's tea stormy, you know, I would take it and I'd be super thankful for it and I'd probably love it. But I'm a little hesitant to bring one into my collection because they're expensive and sometimes they just, Okay, so now we actually have miscellaneous, which these are species that were sent to me and I didn't have enough of them to kind of make its own like folder. All right, so first we have a cobalt blue, which I'm surprised we didn't get more of these. Another species I don't have that you guys ask me about all the time. Thanks Exotic Slayer for that. But yeah, this enclosure looks good. Here's a Hapalopus species, Columbia. I love this enclosure. I love how you left the pot with the plant. I like the creepy, spooky looking sticks in the background and the pumpkin bird with like moss and just it looks super creepy and cool and I like this a lot. I hope it webs up for you. If it hasn't yet, I hope it webs up those branches in the back because that would look super cool. Okay, so here is an NNC. I actually have an NNC which I got as a sling and it's actually like gotten to be like a sizable, you know. I do like how this is set up and you know it's you see how it's like lower in the front and then it kind of 
goes up in the back. That's like a really nice natural like rise and scape and it kind of gives them those options. Tarantulas love options. C. Fimbriatus. So I'm not familiar with the species. I'm gonna be honest. It looks like they web a lot. It looks like you've got that covered. <laughs> I don't know. Is this a key Fimbriatus? What is that? Kilobrachys? Okay, so here's a Kilobrachys. Discoltus. This enclosure looks cool though. It has like a nice webbing draped on the bottom, some live plants. That's a, something I haven't thought about before though. What if it's like a really heavy webber and it webs up the plants? Is that gonna kill the plants? C. Liviter. This one is a great example of just having a lot of substrate for them to dig because that's what they do. D. Diamond and Tenensis. D. Diamond and Tenensis. D. Diamond Tenensis. That's a lot of webbing. Like, is there even a spider in there? 90% webbing. Here's another D. Diamond Tenensis. This one has calmed down on the web. Webbing. Yeah, this enclosure looks good. I like it. I wonder though, would that wood mold? Another Hapalopus species, Columbia. Very nice. Big water dish, moss, good hide. I like it. Good job. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, whoa, what is this? Heteropelma maxima. Heteropelma maxima. Hmm. So this is like a twin enclosure. I, I guess they're both the same species. I can't, I don't see a spider in there, but I, I trust that there is one somewhere. <laughs> Did you build these? This is nice. I like it in the background. Yes, I like the background. I'm not that familiar with that species though, so I can't, I feel like I can't be like, good job or bad job because I don't, I don't keep that species. I haven't kept it before, so I, I don't know. P. Cambridge, okay, I do keep that. This enclosure looks great. P. Cambridge actually are arboreal, but they do like to hang out near the bottom of the enclosure and kind of build what people tend to call dirt curtains. I feel like that sounds bad, but this one looks good. I really like this enclosure. I'm sure it probably hides in the cork. I actually have one of mine set up almost identical to this, except smaller, because it's still a sling. T. Villosus. I might try to add some more coverage up top. Oh, wait. Right. Okay, so we have one more folder and it is the not specified folder, which is pretty much enclosures that people had commented for me to react to, but they didn't include the species name. So I don't know for sure what species it is, but I still wanted to react to the enclosures themselves and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say what I think would go good in them. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna say what I think would go good in them and I think this enclosure would be... What would I put in there? Ooh, like maybe like a Pimachala. I would put like a Pimachala in there. Yeah, I don't know what kind of spider this is, but I think it's a Gremistola pulchra. I like the pink lid. Hopefully it's a girl for you. Okay, so this is not specified, but with this enclosure, if it were me, I would put a, I'd put some kind of Samaltais in there. Maybe like a P. Redonkis. Oh, it looks like there's a pokey there. Oh, I see the pokey. I see you. All right, also not specified. This is fall themed. When I asked for these, it was like before Halloween. So I think a lot of people had actually like made like fall or Halloween looking enclosures. This one looks really cool. I love it. If I was gonna put something in there, I would put in maybe an Iridopelma hirsutum because they've got that like bright red stripe down their abdomen. All right, this is not specified, but it looks like there's a squishy little sling in there. Maybe it's a Brachypelma species. Um, Not sure, but I mean, it'd be appropriate for pretty much any Brachypelma species. If that's what it is, I mean, it'd be appropriate for most species because you don't really need more than dirt for pretty much any sling, unless it's arboreal. Here's another not specified, but actually looking at it, I'm guessing this is a green bottle blue. Yeah, this looks like a green bottle blue to me, but it's a really cool enclosure for a green bottle blue. I don't know, is that blue sand? I used that blue sand before for my dune scorpion. Semi-arboreal setup, looks like it's got anchor points to web to. Not sure if that's sand though. If it is, I think that's fine to like mix it up but I don't know I'm just kind of curious what it is so this one was not specified but it looks like it might be some kind of pamphibedia species from far away can't really tell but I really like is that moss growing it looks like they actually use like dirt from the ground which is way better than Igor if I honestly rather use this because it's probably not going to be as prone to molding all right last one we have one two three four five six looks like six different tarantulas and they all look really nice. It looks like a little tarantula motel. It looks like all acrylic display boxes from Hobby Lobby and the container store, ventilation, everything looks like it's taken well care of. So very nice. Okay, so we are done. We went through all of those. Oh my gosh, that was so many, but we did it, two parts. Yes, okay, so I hope this video was fun and you guys liked it. Like this video if you did. 
Subscribe if you're not. And you want to be. Don't forget that I have an Instagram that I use probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon link below. A few shirts. Just a bunch of fun things. Thank you guys so much for sharing your photographs with me. And I will see you guys soon.